Hi Year 12, um, Miss Hopkins here. As promised, this is your lesson for this week um, and we're still focusing on fish tank. The first thing I want you to think about is the fact that nothing about this opening shot symbolises a fish tank as you would expect. So when we press play, this is the first thing that we see from this film. Um, and whilst I go over the things that we're going to be talking about today on the next slide, I just want you to be pondering in the back of your head, why do you think Andrea Arnold chose to create her title shot in this way? If you'd rather just think about that for a moment, just pause this, write a few bullet points and we'll come back to it in a moment. So today, um, two aims of the lesson. First one is to analyse the application of film form in a key sequence from Fish Tank. And we've done this before. You've definitely done it with me for Vertigo and Inception. Um, and then we're also going to think about how we um, are able to identify the way that film form links with the ideologies that we discussed last week. So just as a quick recap, five categories of film form, cinematography, mise-en-scene, editing, performance and sound. And the whole point of this is to link with the exam assessment objective, which wants you to understand or to demonstrate your knowledge and understanding of elements of film. The very first thing that you need to do is get onto Edmodo if you haven't done so already and read this cheat sheet. These are the first source of all films that you should go to that we have to study. It's made by the exam board and it tells you, gives you a lot of context about them. So you probably want to pause this presentation here if you haven't read it already so that you can log on to Edmodo and go and find it. It's in our unit one folder on our page as you can see here. Okay, so once you've read that, um, I'm not going to go through key parts of that. Um, it's there for you to use as a tool to support you with this lesson. Um, I'm just going to go back to this title slide. So for me, the reason I wanted to, to bring this up straight away is when we're analysing films, um, we always think about really important or significant shots. Um, for instance, in Inception with the spinning totem, it's the key shot that makes everybody understand what the film's about. But sometimes we forget to look at the title shots as well. The title shots are just as important. Andrea Arnold would have really planned exactly how this was going to look. It wouldn't have been just in Final Cut, I'll just type fish tank and whatever, we'll hope for the best. And for me, the reason I think that she has done this is because it very obviously does not connote a fish tank. And that, therefore, from the very start of the film, shows to me, as the audience, as a spectator, that the narrative of this film is going to jar or argue or challenge against anything that is ideal. So it's not an ideal vision of a fish tank. Therefore, what is about to come next in the rest of the film probably isn't an ideal vision of society, of youth, of gender, of relationships, and that inevitably does become true. Okay, first task was to go and read the cheat sheet, which I hope you've all done. This is your second task, and this is the biggest chunk of the lesson, and I'll be spending a lot of time to go through this. So you need to analyze the opening scene of Fish Tank. We're going to do the opening scene. I know we focused a lot on it in the lesson that I produced last time, but I feel like we need to keep going over this, the same kind of um, scenes within the film to embed our understanding before I teach you or allow you to go off onto different scenes. And obviously for me, as I said in the ideologies PowerPoint uh, lesson, this opening scene instantly creates a symbolic idea of what is going to happen in the rest of the film. So that's why we're focusing on the keys on the first sequence still. Now the next few, few slides, sorry, of this lesson are going to show you how you can do this analysis. Um, I've highlighted key areas within each of the film form categories, which are over here, which we went through earlier. And I've also created three examples of how you could tackle this task in a clear and logical way. If you want to do it slightly differently, that's absolutely fine. But I think the way that I've done it for you um, really helps to highlight everything that you need to understand and allows you to tick boxes or to tick off checklists so that you, you definitely know and can recognise the depth of your understanding. So for each of these five categories, what you're going to have to do is to take two screenshots um, from within the opening scene. In my examples, I've only given you one. You will have to double that. And you then need to write three points of analysis for in each screenshot as a minimum. 
Um, I think on one of mine I've managed to write five points and on the others I've, I've managed to get three. Um, but you should definitely aim for three. So what you need to do now is either um, pause this presentation and go and watch the, the clip um, or well, in fact, no, that's exactly what you want to do because I'm not going to press play here because it will take ages. So pause the presentation um, and then go and watch the clip, which I will also upload into the uh, Edmodo task and on Go for Schools. Just as a recap, because you're going to need them, these are the ideologies that we spoke about last week. So within Fish Tank, there's definitely references to social issues within the UK and within society. Mia is born into poverty, both financial um, and a poverty of love and the lack of both of those in her life do dictate and control the outlook that she has um, in terms of her opportunities in life and what she can achieve. Arnold um, has dominant representations of youth but she challenges them. We do see Mia as difficult and as deviant. She isn't at school, she swears a lot, she's drinking alcohol, she's doing lots of things that children of her age shouldn't be doing. But because we see this from Mia's perspective, um, this enables us to empathise with her. And the last one, the lack of the nuclear family has a massive impact on the children and a snowballing effect that continues later into life. So potentially is Mia going to end up just like her mother because that's the way that she's been brought up and that's what she knows. She doesn't understand what it's like to have a mother and a father and financial safety and love around her it may be worth you stopping and making notes of these if you need them um, I know that whenever I'm being taught something new I have to make notes the whole time otherwise it doesn't go in but of course you can just keep pausing and going back on this presentation so we've watched the clip we know what our ideologies are let's get on to the points of film form the first one we're going to focus on is cinematography. Okay, and what I've done for you for each of the categories of film form is taken what the exam board expects you to know, and then I've highlighted key areas that for this task I'd like you to focus on. They're colour coded in terms of how we use the bricks in class. Um, so cinematography is green and also on some of them you've got a little purple box because this would be your extension. If you really want to challenge yourself in this task, this is what you need to think about. So for cinematography, I want you to think about the specific camera shots, including point of view shots that are used, um, also camera angles. Secondly, the composition. Where are the characters placed? How is the um, setting positioned in, compared, uh, in comparison to that character? We did a practical task on this um, in one of my lessons before when I asked you to go out with the cameras and to take really interesting shots um, that you'd composed uh, differently and creatively to what you normally would have. So think about that. I also want you to think about how the shot relates to the narrative development and conveys messages. How cinematography, don't forget lighting, it's very important, provides psychological insight into the character. How cinematography and lighting is used to align the spectators with the characters and with our interpretation of the narrative. And how cinematography, including lighting again, contributes to the ideologies. Your extension would be linking this to last week's task with Miss Burns about Andrea Arnold as an auteur. Does the cinematography that you're seeing in this scene really present her as a standout auteur? So, my example... What I've done whilst watching the clip is I've screenshot um, an image or a shot that I think was really significant. Um, I've given it the, the title of the slide, Cinematography, and then I've literally just taken four of the key points from the previous slide. So you can see, number one, I've got camera angles. Number two, I've got composition. Number three, narrative development here. Number four, psychological insight here. And I did manage to look at the ideologies as well. Okay, so camera angle is a high angle looking down. Composition, Mia is centrally framed. She's in the center of that shot. For narrative development, I've spoken about how this is the first shot that we see after the title. 
so that black screen with fish tank in the middle this is the next thing we're, we're presented with as an audience Mia's not looking at us she's surrounded by blue as a fish would be in the water of a fish tank so we are placed to be looking down at her as we would be if we were to peer into an actual fish tank and I think that's really important notice that I've used we here there's there's no getting away from that whoever is watching this is going to be placed in that position but for the psychological insight I've changed it to I because the way that I interpret that could be different to somebody else now psychological insight this symbolic image connotes that Mia is a character who is trapped by her surroundings as a fish is by the glass walls of its tank because of that I sympathize with her instantly She's holding onto her thighs and she appear, appears vulnerable to me. Um, ideologies. Because I get the impression from this shot that Mia is trapped, I can make links to the idea that Mia's opportunities in life are limited by the things that are out of control. And of course we later see that that is true because of the poverty um, that she is surrounded by. I also, and I haven't written this, I'm just going to talk about it, think that this use of ideology and this sense of realism that I am getting here um, I'm looking down on someone I'm, I'm being made to judge her I'm being made to interpret who she is just from a single glance at her does link to Andrea Arnold as an auteur because Andrea Arnold's um, one of her main goals is to represent reality and to represent the fight that people living in society have day on day in order just to get by and this shot for me instantly symbolizes that so what you need to do is go back to the clip choose a specific shot um, that really rings true to you in terms of its cinematography pop it into a powerpoint and then do exactly as i've done here list the things from the list on the previous slide that you think it links to and literally that is you analyzing the cinematography you need to do it twice as i've said i've only done one in my examples but the task needs you to do two things for cinematography and two things for the other areas so let's go into my second one mise en scène key things that i want to focus on in yellow setting props costumes and makeup how changes in mise-en-scene contribute to character and narrative development. How mise-en-scene conveys messages and values. The significance of motifs uh, used in mise-en-scene included their patterned repetition. How mise-en-scene contributes to the ideologies within the film. And again, if you can, link the mise-en-scene to the auteur approach of Arnold. As I said, here I only managed to get three. Okay, on the previous one I did get five, but mise-en-scene, setting and props, sorry that doesn't show up particularly well in that colour, um, but this is setting and props. Mia's dressed in mainly grey, it lacks personality or anything that would make her stand out. She's trying to show off her feminine side through her hooped earrings, but never allows this fully to shine. So we've got a, a very kind of standard um, boyish, if you would like to think about gendered clothing, um, costume that she's got on here a black bag nothing about this is particularly feminine except for this particularly large hoop that she wears um, the messages and the values that are conveyed so because of her costume we can infer that Mia feels the need to be strong so it's quite a masculine costume that's what I'm suggesting and not dainty and that she does not want to stand out in her in her surroundings she really does begin to blend in um, motifs the use of a grey lighter tracksuit at the start of the film this is one of the, the very earliest shots within the film could indicate a weakness in Mia and I've made a link here to the, the motif of the horse so the, the tracksuit that she's wearing here at the start when she's a bit of a weaker character um, could be compared to the colour of the horse that she's so drawn to at the end of the day although that horse does signify hope for Mia the horse does come to a very unhopeful end if you would like it you know it doesn't survive and I think that can be compared to the stark contrast of her black tracksuit at the end of the film when she is in control and leaves her current life behind her so the use of color gray and black definitely a repetitive motif within the film 
So again, what you would need to do is, uh, whilst watching the clip, take two screenshots um, and then bullet point your list down here of your analysis of mise-en-scene within that shot type. Okay, thirdly, you need to think about editing. So the shot-to-shot -shot relationships of continuity editing. So why do certain shots follow the shot previous to them? Is there a relationship between the two of them? Um, the role of editing in creating meaning. How editing implies relationships between characters and contributes to the narrative. How editing is used to align the spectator. Um, and finally, how editing contributes to the ideologies of the film. So for this one, because obviously one screenshotted image does not represent the editing, what I have done for you is I've screenshotted the first image followed by the shot that comes after it. So we as an audience view this shot and we're instantly then cut to this shot. So the relationships between the shots, the change between the distance um, between the camera and Mia from a long shot over here to the close up here invites the audience to get closer to her and it heightens our understanding of her emotions. Over here she's just a silhouette, uh, she's just someone that we're, we're observing, we're quite voyeuristic to but because we get right up close to her again, still quite silhouette like but we can see more detail of her as a character and the prop that she's holding, we are invited to get a better understanding of how she's feeling and what's going on in her life. And that is basically this point here, creating meaning. Because we're now close to her, the audience pick up on her body language and the tension that she's feeling gives us an early insight into her character's mood and perhaps her personality. And finally, I think this particular piece of editing instantly aligns us with her as a character. Being this close to a character so early on in the film and being given insights to her vulnerability, as I discussed in the very first shot that we see, and her emotions and having met no other characters, we instantly align ourselves with her as the camera places us as the only other presence within the room that she's isolated with it herself in. So this room where she goes to dance, she's there, she's on her own, she isolates herself, she gets away from her reality, but this use of camera getting very close to her presents us right there with her. We understand her, we, we learn about her, we see things that other characters within the film don't, and that gives us an alignment to her. Okay, so there are my three examples for you done. So let's just recap the task. So you need to analyse the opening scene of Fish Tank. The slides that I've just shown you introduce how to do this for you. I have highlighted the key areas within each of these different um, categories of film form that you should focus on. And you've now got three examples. Okay, the difference is from my examples, you have to take two screenshots of images per category so in total you will have 10 different slides um, and you need to make three points of analysis for each shot on the first one I managed to get five and on the second two I did get three try not to use the same um, shots that I've taken but of course if you've interpreted or inferred something different from them um, you could use them so I'm not going to give you examples for these but I'll just go through what I've highlighted so performance the significance of casting um, was the actress who plays Mia known or was she unknown? Why did Andrea Arnold choose Michael Fassbender? At the time, was he a well-known actor, actor sorry, or was he not? Is there a significance from the fact that he has a different accent to Mia? Uh, maybe presenting him as somebody um, not otherworldly, but somebody um, from a different area from her, and is that significant? How has the performance conveyed messages and values? So the way that the characters perform their roles, do we understand different messages and values? And how do they, the performances also contribute to our ideologies of the film? And for sound, the last one, focus on diegetic or non-diegetic sound. Diegetic being, if you were in the scene, you would hear it as well. Cars driving past, dialogue, um, in the background, for instance, is someone having an argument in the background, park swings, dogs barking, kettles boiling, or non-diegetic sound, soundtrack, not just music. And that's very important for you to understand within this film because actually a lot of the music that we hear is diegetic because we're listening to it at the same time that Mia is or that Connor is. So non-diegetic soundtrack uh, 
music that's put on to add um, a kind of tension or to add a uh, atmosphere to the film that the characters can't hear. How sound relates to characters and narrative development. We spoke a little bit, a bit about this um, on a previous task. What is the significance of the music and how does it develop the, the narrative? How sound conveys messages and values. How it is used to align the spectator and how it contributes to the ideologies conveyed by the film. So, you probably want to pause this now. Go and watch the clip again. Begin to take your screenshots. Two for cinematography, two for mise-en-scene, two for editing, two for performance and two for sound. Pop them into a PowerPoint and start to analyse at least three different points for each of those screenshots that you've taken. If you cannot produce a PowerPoint, not a problem at all. Screenshot your chosen shots on your phone if that's how you're accessing it or on the laptop. Handwrite your notes um, and your analysis and then photograph, excuse the why there, um, photograph the notes that you've taken and you can submit all of your images via email to me. If, if you can't put them on Edmodo, just send me the, the, an email, sorry, of your screenshots and your photograph notes. Okay, final task then is a written task as it always is when it comes to the lessons that I've produced for you because I think not only do you need to make the notes, you need to apply your understanding which definitely links with our assessment objective over here. Demonstrate knowledge and understanding of elements of film. What I'd like you to do is to write 500 words to answer this question. How has Andrea Arnold used film form? Here you go, what the whole lesson has been about. To align the audience with Mia as the main character within the opening scene. So I want you to reference at least three different categories of film form. So how has the cinematography aligned us with Mia? How has the mise-en-scene aligned us with her? How has the sound aligned us with her? You can pick any three you like, but you need to reference three of them. In order to challenge yourself in this task though, it would also be great and a really strong answer if you could reference at least one of the ideologies that Arnold has created. And I went through these at the start of the PowerPoint, so you might need to go back to them. Okay, that's your task for this week. As ever, and as I said at the start, if you do have questions, just send me an email or drop me a message on Teams. I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can, even if it's a Teams call with you, not a problem at all. Um, just get in touch. Let me know if you need anything and I look forward to reading your work, guys. Take care.